Now we move on to pioneers. Dr. James Tyler Kent, 1849 to 1916. His conversion story, you all know, he was an eclectic physician. His wife had insomnia, which was treated by Dr. Fallon. So these, these questions might come. Dr. Fallon and which remedy was used to treat his wife, Lachesis. So insomnia was treated by Dr. Fallon and Lachesis was used. And this eclectic physician develops interest in homeopathy and then he becomes a great homeopathic physician. Contributions, there are a lot of contributions, but I've just picked the most important ones right? because we need to know these names. It's very important to know these names of the book because we might say Kent, uh, Metromedica of Kent. Then philosophy of Ken, that's it. He contributed to repertory. See the repertory of homeopathic materia medica. Then lectures on homeopathic philosophy. That goes to organ one. Then lectures on homeopathic materia medica. That goes to materia medica. So in the years, repertory was in the year 1897. Lectures on homeopathic philosophy was in the year 1900. And lectures on homeopathic materia medica was in the year 1905. The series in degree doctrine. This one was introduced by Dr. Kent. That is when you give this medicine in a series, that doctrine is his contribution, like 30, then 200, then one num, that particular series. There are a lot of things to explain about this particular pioneer, most of them, but I've made it very, very concise. You can go through the material, the study material, what you have in mediexpress.com. Next one is Bonnie Hudson, his full name is Baron Clemens Maria Franz von Bonnie Hudson. Conversion, he was attacked by tuberculosis in 1828. And Dr. Wei cured him. And the medicine used was pulsatilla. So remember this. Always you think of this in organon wherever you see names of remedies. Like Hanneman suggested uh, opium in case if symptoms are too indistinct. So when uh, remedies come in organon or footnote, uh, remember those things. It might be a question. Even in case of pioneers, Lachesis was given to Ken's wife, Pulsatla was given to Bonnie Austin, and the doctor was Wade. Contributions, uh, repertory of antisorics in 1832, therapeutic pocketbook in 1836, theory of concomitance, grand generalization, evaluation of symptoms, all these things are contributions by Dr. Bonnie Then shall we move a little more faster because these are for you to memorize there is nothing to be understood or taught what is that yeah 1846 btp oh, what was he meant oh my god sorry sorry that typing mistake okay 1846 btp okay i can't correct it it's a marker okay okay yeah, it's 1846. Dr. Constantine Herring. So it's easy for you to remember this year's birth and that 1800 to 1880, he lived for 80 years. Conversion. That is, uh, he was asked to write a heresy about homeopathy. Dr. Roby asked him to write, a, that is a publisher who na uh, named Bo Baumgartner wanted to publish a book against homeopathy. And Dr. Roby recommended Dr. Herring to write a book against homeopathy. For this purpose, he learned about homeopathy and he tested it on himself. He did the therapeutic Singona um, Buck experiment and he found that homeopathy is effective and he got converted. So this is conversion of Dr. Constantine Herring. Contributions are uh, in 1879, the guiding symptoms of our Metagy Medica. That is uh, the book we called Herring's Guiding Symptoms. It has 10 volumes, then analytic repertory. Then he proved medicines like lachesis and lysine. He was an adventurous person. The number of drugs proved by Herring, it was a question. 72. So lachesis and lysine uh, were proved by Herring. That's the reason why he is called uh, such an adventurous prover. And also he contributed. This is uh, the contribution. Law of direction of cure. So you know Herring's law of direction of cure. It is from above downwards, from within outwards, from more important organs to less important organs. And in the reverse order of appearance of symptoms. So even that idea is his contribution. Moving on, Richard Hughes' contributions. 
manual of pharmacodynamics encyclopedia of drug pathogenesis which has six volumes and four editions why i'm giving only these important books are uh, because these are the most important things because you cannot miss these things a manual of pharmacodynamics is such an important and famous work of richard huge so uh, it's more likely to come on a question paper okay lipe yeah he wrote lipe smith america why why i have mentioned only this lipe smith america is because you will learn this thing in repertory about the history of repertories uh, when it comes to bonding was in therapeutic pocket book okay so lipe wesenfeld he wrote lipe smith america 1812 to 1888 c m bogger bonding was in characteristics and repertory in 1905 he is the person who revived the idea of doct uh, theory of grand generalization that is um bonding was in brought this idea of grand generalization even dr samuel hanneman approved it but when kent came up with his repertory this idea of grand generalization was back seated because it was more convenient for people to use kent's repertory the deductive logic repertory than uh, the idea of grand generalization where each symptom should be gathered from two three places because you are breaking a symptom into location sensitive modality you have to take it from different places so it was more convenient to use kent's repertory and it was more convincing too but when sirus maxwell bogger he came with this bonding was in characteristics and repertory bbcr in 1905 this idea which was back seated came to the mainstream once again also a synoptic key of metri america is another famous work of cm bogger in 1915 carol dunham so there is this dunham potency yeah dunham potency this is his contribution and he had two experiences with homeopathy one given as a dis uh, dissecting wound which was cured by lachesis and then later when he developed rheumatic carditis dr herring prescribed him lithium car so this medicine cured him of his rheumatic carditis contributions homeopathy the science of therapeutics in 1877 lectures on metri america in 1879 the roberts contributions the principles and art of cure by homeopathy rheumatic remedies then sensations as if sensations as if this book this book is by h roberts okay and the principles and art of cure by homeopathy it's there in our syllabus out of the few books of philosophy what we learn in organon ml tyler um, homeopathic drug pictures that is the most important and famous work homeopathy's cause pointer to common remedies phyllis spate contributions a comparison of chronic myasms then homeopathic remedies for children to our close the genius of homeopathy again it's there in our syllabus he was the editor of homeopathic recorder then comes elizabeth right even she was the editor of homeopathic recorder and contributions she was the first woman president of aih american institute of homeopathy now comes e b nash eugene Buhar Nash Nash contributions leaders in homeopathic therapeutics leaders for the use of sulfur leaders in typhoid regional leaders testimony of the clinic so because these uh, leaders came again and again that's the reason why I added all these names to this slide because if any of these are asked you can answer it very well all these four uh, books titles have the name leaders. also in contributions i must say trio that is trios of nash you have trios of restlessness trios of sleepiness trios of pain all these things are contributions of dr eb nash hc allen contributions keynotes of leading remedies the homeopathic therapeutics of intermittent fever the homeopathic therapeutics of fever you might remember it i think it's it's very famous all of you might remember it h clark contributions a dictionary of practical metri medica three volumes that is the most important contribution by him then comes the prescriber even this book is important the prescriber uh, i have seen a question asking the author of the book the prescriber the answer is jh clark john henry henry clark a bird's eye view on hanneman's organon clark's abc manual constitutional prescribing homeopathy explained or these are his works e f harrington contributions studies in metri medica then cyclopedia of drug pathogenesis Cyclopedia of Drug Pathogenicity is by E. A. Farrington. E. F. Allen, Encyclopedia of Pure Materia Medica, twelve volumes of it. So, uh, Dictionary of Practical Materia Medica is by J. H. Clark. Cyclopedia of Drug Pathogenicity is by E. A. Farrington. 
Encyclopedia of Pure Materia Medica is by E. F. Allen. Okay. William Boric contributions. Yes, Boric's Materia Medica. That is Homeopathic Materia Medica. The title is Homeopathic Materia Medica in 1901. And in 1906, his brother Oscar E. Boric added a repertory to it and uh, a comprehensive on the principles of homeopathy. Even that is his work. And another most, most, most important thing is he translated the sixth edition of Organ of Medicine in English. That is the one which we were reading till now. Dr. William Boric is the one who translated sixth edition of Organ to English. Then comes John Martin Honenberger. He is the one who introduced homeopathy to India. He treated Maharaja Ranjit Singh of Punjab for his paralysis of vocal cords and edema. Also, he treated this Maharaja's um, horse for its bad ulcers on leg. And that's how he popularized homeopathy in India. Babu Rajendra Lal Dutt, he is the person is considered to be father of Indian homeopathy. So this can be a question. Father of Indian homeopathy is Babu Rajendra Lal Dutt. He cured celebrities like Pandit Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. So that brought more fame to homeopathy. Dr. L. D. Thawale, uh, his contributions are difficulties in homeopathic practice. That is his work, an introduction to homeopathy. Mahendra Lal Sarkar. So um, his contributions are Hanuman, a father of scientific medicine, therapeutics of plague, and even more books are there. I added only these two. 